So in this video, we will see how we can cluster our Node.js application. Right. So let's begin with a simple explanation of how a Node.js process works. So consider um, this as the CPU, right? So this is a CPU, but not an old CPU. This is a new CPU, a new CPU which has multiple cores. So let us say that it has four cores, right? The Intel quad core CPU is an example of that. So four cores like this, okay? And wait, let me just, yep, four cores. And now here we have our Node.js application. So this is our Node.js, or let me say this is our server, right? So what if an external application sends a request? So let me write the external application like this. So this is the client and the client is requesting for something. So here will be the request. So what the server does is if it's a Node.js server, it will spin up a Node.js process. So this is a process. So process is simply something that consumes the CPU resources. So in this case, this process will be tied to the single core one core of by default it will take up one core of our cpu right this is one this is two this is three this is four now what happens if there are like a thousand clients right a thousand clients requesting all at once right so you have requests coming from here you have requests coming from here sorry here here you know the server is bombarded with requests so what we can do now is we can do a simple thing called clustering so this comes in handy for small to mid-sized applications where you don't want something like docker you had you don't have time to change the entire architecture to support docker or support containerization right so what you can do here is you can have this process right over here and this will be the initial process okay and this process will act as the cluster or the clustering configuration and what this is supposed to do is this will distribute or form multiple processes each running on the cores available to the CPU I mean to the process right so here you will have a process here you will have a process and here you'll have a process so anyway so this is uh, coming uh, by demand right so if suppose this is not here and another request you know this request comes in so what this does is it sees that a core is free and it will spin up a new process and this process will take up this core right so this is kind of like the architecture on a very high level that we are going to investigate in the thing that we're going to do right so let's jump into the code let's create a index.js file and i will mention uh, what all dependencies we want in uh, the description of the video so let's just define a port 3000 const okay so yeah so and we'll say const app is equal to express and yeah we'll just uh, fast forward this section uh, basically what we're doing is we're gonna uh, create a request that will receive uh, on slash load test and we are just going to loop through i equals 0 to 50 million that's what we're gonna do and we will simulate this using a package called load test so very simple test to overload the cpu and get our performance uh, results right we'll see how many processes or how many requests got through how many requests got failed this is a very good way to analyze and you know take uh, you know without anything else this you can directly do in your local right so I uh, we just defined a loop that goes from 0 to 50 million and I will say app dot listen to the port and console log uh, we'll just say something like app is listening to port and um, con 
console.log worker PID so we'll have uh, we'll just get the PID of the worker which is the primary worker uh, in this case I mean the process uh, in here right and here uh, let's just run this app using the load test right so here uh, we'll just go and say node index.js so let's go ahead and write that node index.js and our app is in fact listening at port 3000 and the worker PID is yes you can see 1374 right on my screen right now let's open a new terminal and let's say npx load test uh, dash n and you have to give the number of requests that you want to bombard a service with and the number of concurrent requests by dash c so let's give 400 and let's specify uh, the URL so HTTP localhost 3000 slash load test is what we define and hit enter right so once we hit enter it'll take some time and as you can see we have a number of failed requests so out of 1500 completed requests we have about more than half of the requests failed so this is because our process was only utilizing one core of the CPU right and that's because we configured it that way so let's create a new file called cluster.js and we will cluster our processes to use multiple cores and then benchmark and see the results that we're getting so let me just import cluster from cluster so cluster is nothing but node.js process that can use multiple instances of node.js and these node.js processes will be distributed ac across the cores in a round robin fashion right so let us import os from os and import dir name so dir name uh, we are taking because we want to specify the path of the index.js file so let's specify const dir name you can give it whatever name you want and we will say dir name and we will say file url the path of import.meta.url and we, are, we want to get the cpu count we want to look to the cpu count so os.cpu dot length will give you the number of cores or uh, yeah the CPU count of your machine and let's console log that total number of CPUs is equal to CPU count and what else we will console log PID is equal to let's console log the ID of the primary process so process dot PID now what we have to do so cluster dot set primary so we are setting the primary process to the index.js file and that is where the dir name comes into play so exact dir name plus slash index.js okay and so now we have to loop through the CPUs, right? So for let i is equal to zero, i less than CPU count, i plus plus, and we will say cluster dot fork. So what this does is this will distribute incoming requests to the different cores of the CPU. And this is a really amazing way to spread your workload across uh, your machine so if you're using a you know six core machine then why not use all six cores again it comes down to uh, what is your use case and dependency but this is the gist of it so cluster dot on exit so uh, here we will also specify if any of the process fails we will spin up that again so cluster dot on exit we will console log worker that got killed so let's uh, just log the PID of the worker that got killed just like this PID has been killed and console log starting another worker and we will again say cluster dot fork that's it so now let's test our application so here what we'll what we'll do is we will run uh, the cluster.js file and we will see that so since my uh, browser has 12 threads uh, on all the 12 threads the process is listening to port 3000 
right and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna load test it again with 1000 requests and 500 concurrent connections and we will see how it performs it's taking some time the requests are coming in as you can see and yeah this is good stuff and as you can see the number of errors is zero so last time we saw that almost half of the request failed but you see the power of clustering that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next one peace